I have been having such a good time this week. This Sunday night will be my first dinner party in my new home here. And I have invited three friends that we all know each other, but we haven't seen each other in 10 years. So it's, this is going to be so exciting for me. And you know, I used to be a caterer. So whenever I give a little dinner party, the expectations are a little bit higher because that's what I used to do for a living, make things pretty. So I got to thinking, you know what I should do? I should do a video on how I do a table setting and what I base some of my choices after. Now, it's true I might be a little rusty. I haven't owned a catering business in 30 years, but some things I think are timeless. I love that bowl. That is the perfect color green to go with my Tuscany Rose China. I love it. Oh, it's in perfect condition. Here's this beautiful little flower blooming. It doesn't even look real, but it is. tell you how happy I am to see you right now. Hey everybody, thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi. I hope you had a good week. I had a very stressful week, but I'm okay. I got through it and everything is going to be fine. So like I said in the introduction, I want to take you through a table set for four and I want to show you some of the things that I bought at the store that are brand new, but most of the things I want to show you are vintage, things I got at the thrift store. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun today. There was a time I really loved being a caterer. It was a lot of stress. I mean, I did everything from box lunches to sit down weddings for 300, but it was, it was a very creative, um, inspirational job. It really was. I loved it. And you don't have to be rich or, you know, really talented to have a beautiful table. And I just want to pass on some of my very best tips for having a beautiful table with things that perhaps you've thrifted or things that you've bought maybe off of Amazon that looks absolutely expensive. But I want to show you a couple looks. And one look is with my Tuscany Rose China that I love so much that I have thrifted. And this is very Italian and it's floral with a lot of burgundies and a beautiful peach. This white in this plate is so beautiful, but I think what really pops is the green. So what I want to show you is how I took that green and incorporated it to other things on the table, including the tablecloth. So I think that'll be kind of fun. The other look I want to show you is a more traditional look. It's an older look and the vibe is English. This is Royal Stanford and this is such a beautiful blue pattern. But because this is English, we're not going to do the Italian vibe. We're going to do a very English vibe if I can pull that off. When you are doing blue and white, I think Everything blue and white on the table just looks beautiful. For me, I don't think we even need a pop of color. And there's something about a beautiful candelabra when you're using blue and white. Oh. Got your 
China and you've got everything coordinated and now you're just going for the vibe. And like I said, the Tuscany rose that I love so much is Italian. So I want to show you some of the things that I got that go with that Italian vibe before I show you the table. And like this is my Tuscany rose and as you can see, I don't want to blind you because in the middle here is a mirror. The stone pattern around this mirror is the same pattern as on my china plates. I mean, I can't believe I found this. It almost looks just like a beautiful charger, but it's not. I don't really care for chargers because they take up so much room. But if I had a bigger table, I would, but I don't. This can be used as part of the centerpiece. I can put flowers on here, I can put candles on here, and the candles will reflect in the mirror. So very, very Italian. Look at the, isn't this cool? I just bought this yesterday for the table, but it's so Italian. You put this on your table, you can put a bottle of wine, or how about some cheese and grapes? Just something that screams, Arrivederci, right? Some things you just can't thrift. And I love, you know, the elegance of a dinner party where you can, you know, grind your pepper, grind your salt. And I found these on Amazon and they're so sharp and beautiful. I'll show you a close up of these on the table. But, you know, how lovely, you know, you can take your peppercorn and you can just, at the table, grind someone's pepper on there. I mean, it's just, it's so nice and it's so elegant. I found this vase at Goodwill yesterday and there was something about that tone that matched that kind of orangey peach color in the plate and I thought, ah, oh, that looks so good. But then when I used it as a centerpiece, it didn't really work. I think there's something about a centerpiece that, well, these are dried hydrangeas, so they're not plastic or silk flowers, they're real but there's something about a dinner party. Like I said, magical and memorable. I think you need real flowers. I picked up for my centerpiece for my Italian setting, sunflowers. And there was something about, I just got sunflowers and baby's breath. And I thought, that's so beautiful and it's so appropriate for something so lovely and happy and Italian. Talk about centerpieces. There's nothing like a candle holder or a candelabra to put in the middle of your table. There's nothing more beautiful than that to me. And you might think, well, that's a little over the top for my crowd, you know? And well, it, it's a little over the top for my crowd too, but I don't care and they've come to expect it and they love it. So I'm gonna keep doing it, but I haven't had a glass candelabra in, I don't know, 20 years. And like I said, I cannot believe that when I went out thrifting, I found two. Vintage, wonderful, this one still has a tag on, $3.99. If you price these in the store, if you can even find them, you're talking $30, $40, $50 dollars or more. So I was so happy to get these. When you're having a dinner party, this is you expressing how much affection you have for the people that you have invited over. Not only are you cooking this beautiful meal for them, but you are giving them this beautiful setting in which to enjoy the conversation and the food. 99% of the time when people say they didn't really enjoy the dinner party, usually they'll say, nobody greeted me with a smile at the door. And it made me, it made me feel a little uncomfortable. For this video, I wanted flatware that looked well, I wanted something that kind of looked Italian that sort of matched my Tuscany rose. So I thought, now I'm, I'm gonna get something different, something in gold because I got beautiful green 
linen napkins and I thought, ooh, the gold on that will be beautiful. Now, if it goes over $50, $60, I, I can't afford it. Well, what I found is these, these are so beautiful. I paid $29. This is Broyhill. This is a flat gold 20 piece flower set. Now, I don't think that my friends are going to say, well, that whole dinner party was ruined because really the forks were tarnished. They're not going to say that. But if I'm trying to make it a little bit magical and a little bit memorable, there's going to be something elegant that they might remember, like those beautiful green linen napkins and those beautiful gold knives and forks that they hadn't seen before or hadn't seen in a long time. It's the little things. It's, it's these little things that add up to an amazingly glorious night, sitting around eating wonderful food, having the most lovely conversation. That's what a dinner party is. So every little detail that you can either purchase or you can thrift or maybe just your imagination starts running wild. How can I make my table unique and beautiful? How can I make that centerpiece shine? Maybe speak to one of my guests. I think sometimes we hesitate to match our glasses to our plates and I'm not sure why that is. But there was something about the green in this and then matching it with a green goblet and the Royal Stanford with the beautiful blue goblets. How beautiful. And I do remember that I gave a dinner party over 25 years ago and the sweet gal that was there with her husband is still talking about that night in front of the fire and the blue cobalt blue. You know how people like to decorate their tables, you know, like it's 1890, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, it looks beautiful, beautiful white tablecloth and everything is very formal, it's 1890, okay. Well, to give your table kind of that modern touch, I think there's nothing more beautiful than twinkle lights, but very, very subtle twinkle lights, the best twinkle lights I have ever gotten for a table. Now this is just for a table. Are these right here and these are called Real Living. Now this is not a sponsored video, I promise. <laughs> these are the best. I'll show you a close up of why these are the best, but if you want your table to let's say you don't have a centerpiece or you, or your centerpiece is like meh. You put the twinkle lights like a runner. Maybe you don't have a runner. Have a runner of twinkle lights. If you really put your mind to it, no matter how much money you have or don't have, you can create a beautiful table. Now I'm going to show you my table for Sunday night, a couple different looks, and I'd like you to tell me which one you like best, but just remember I, I spent hardly nothing on these table settings. Always use linen napkins even if you're not using a tablecloth. For your centerpiece, make it romantic and beautiful, magical and memorable, but don't put it in a vase. Use something that's related to food service, like a milk pitcher like I have done here or perhaps a, a large compote bowl. 
you can break pattern on your table, but never break color. One of my very best friends, a lifetime friend, is going through a divorce after 39 years. And I mentioned it in the comments last week. And I have her permission that as long as I don't use her name or her address or anything like that, she said, talk away, share my story. If it helps anybody out there, I'm all in. And maybe someday you'll let me sit down and talk to, talk to your ladies directly. And I said, you got it. She's doing good. Well, she's doing better. You can imagine how she feels. But can I just throw this out there for a minute? Her situation may not be unique, but I have never heard of this before. I was so excited for her. She and her husband, who I thought was a tremendous guy, they sold their large home and they're moving into a condo. Now the condo did seem small for them and way below their means, but okay. I think you're kind of guessing where I'm going here. She moves into this very modest condo and he doesn't. He never told her. She woke up, he never moved in, He's in Colorado. She's here in Michigan. They had seven bank accounts and now she has access to two. The first thing my friend did was, yeah, get a really good lawyer. And the second thing she did was break down. And as she told me, she didn't break down because she missed him so much. She didn't break down because she was missing all that love and affection. She broke down because she felt betrayed. I asked her yesterday, how are you doing? And she said, you know, I'm doing better than I thought I would be doing. It's not that I, I miss his warm hand on my shoulder because it hasn't been there in 10 years. It's, it's not like I, I miss those deep kisses on Saturday night because there hasn't been any kisses in over 10 years. She said, in many ways, nothing has changed. I guess I didn't really understand that things weren't working until it all broke. Women are brilliant. Women are strong. She will recover. But we also know it's, it's not going to be overnight. She's got about enough money to live on for about a year and a half. So she has some big decisions to make. But right now, she's helping me put my little dinner party together over the phone. It doesn't even look real, but it is. Everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I loved every second of it. If you 
get a chance down below, maybe could you share something about how you love to put together a dinner party or anything that might be on your mind that's going on in your life? Please have yourself a wonderful, happy, brand new week. And when you're done with your week, please come back and see me and Desi, okay? All right, it's a deal. We'll be here. When Irish eyes are smiling, the whole world smiles with you. Oh, when Irish eyes are smiling, the whole world smiles with you.